only purchase so far? How many pictures? We have to ten. We have to ten. We can go. So, we check that way. Is that where we're coming from? Yes. The chicken. At least you can put the information from there. Yes. That's it, right? Is it something this way? This way, babe. Say hello. <laughs> mm, so this was their beds in those days, and uh, actually had a basket. Carried them in baskets. names here members of the greatest generation who generously contributed objects photographs and stories wow so many people i guess these are all of them here those who contributed so thank you to all of them what's happening in here The screen is so huge. Wait, is that actually a screen or something? This is how the movie is in Oh, so it's right down there. Okay. Wow. That's quite far. Yeah. So this is how it was the movie theater. But it's not different from what we have nowadays now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> white and black. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's white and black. Alright. Look at these dresses. <laughs> They're cute. And the swords, the dons, the axes, all of this. Huh? Oh, yeah, the bars. Ooh. But it's not quite different from what we have nowadays, huh? Oh, so uh, like as it's going to time. Yeah, I see. So this is 1936. Oh, oh, the dresses. Oh, so this one was before, like, wow. So the clothing and how they changed over the years. Wow. So this is a military dressings, clothing. Oh, I, I usually see this in movies. This uh, sand thing. And they put it there. And the, the fight wall. Oh, look at that. I saw this one. Please do not climb, but you can touch it. Wow. Interesting, guys. That's how they fought walls in those days. With these sandbags and the tanks. TVs, guys. That's how it look like for all those grainy things passing over it. It's black and white. 
This is how they enlisted them into the military. They took their weights, and they did medicals, and they gave them their uniforms and all. All right, let's move on. This was like the, how they were making dresses. Oh, yeah. Nursing. Yeah, nurses, the military. Yeah, these typewriters. Hello. Yeah, so there's a little show inside about paratroopers in World War II. So, what was happening at TV station? So, this section is about World War II, and then this is getting into like the 1950s and like the era after World War II. So, it's kind of about people buying new homes and televisions and kind of the quality of life, consumerism, and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh. No, I don't know if it's. So, the other exhibits and then we have time. Shall we? Yeah, I can start the show for you guys if you want. Yes, please. <laughs> Wait, was it was it an actual plane or the? Rock? Yes, so this is well, it's just the back of the plane. Yeah, like you see in the photograph here, but it is a real plane that flew in World War Two. Yeah, and so it had a couple other lives after that, and then we bought it and repainted it. Yeah, you can come in again if you want. The back of an airplane. So I can tell our new guests what the show's about. All right. So um, our show that we're going to watch is about uh, World War II, as I said, and it's about paratroopers. So soldiers that jump out of planes with parachutes and go right into the middle of battle. And so um, you're going to hear from people from Minnesota that fought in the war, and so they're going to tell you what it was like. And then the last half of the show uh, is going to give you a feel for like you're a soldier in a plane getting ready to, to go fight, to go on your mission. Um, <coughs> and that's it's all. Like speaking. So, yeah. okay. Was it like they just sit? Was there something like a spell? Yeah, there would be more no? things okay. in oh, the plane okay. originally. So, yeah, we've removed some of those things okay. just so it's more comfortable well, and we can, you know, fit everybody in here. Well, um, so these are real holes. bullet holes. So this is yeah. a real airplane that flew in World War II, and then. But how uh, you get it off? How was it all like this when it crashed? How was it not damaged? Well, it didn't actually crash. We're just making it look like it crashed to make it look interesting. In oh, but it didn't crash. No, yeah. No, it didn't it, crash. So this is the thing we're watching is not real. No, this is a real story. It didn't happen in this exact plane. Yeah. Oh, uh, so it happened in a different airplane? So no, you build it to be destroyed? Yeah. Oh. You build it to Okay, no, I'm going to start the show. Plane. This is a different plane from like, you got, did you guys just build it in here? Or no? They're crazy. So we did have to bring in <laughs> this half of the plane into the building. Yep, so we had yeah. to have a big hole in the side of our building to bring it in. Yeah. Okay? Lots of good questions from you guys. <laughs> no, right. I'm going to start it up for you. Yeah. There is a feeling that other people die, not you, but surely in your heart, you know that it might be you. We were just in the barracks, and the sergeant came to it and said, we're looking for volunteers for airborne troop. And he says, the jump pay is 50 bucks a month. It was something brand new. They couldn't get mm. people to go in. It had to be volunteer. They couldn't just draft you in there. So I thought that was the best thing in the world. I got off the bus at the Fort Benny, Georgia. I'm trudging on down the road with my barracks bag on my shoulder, and I heard this aircraft coming up on my right. And all at once, guys started flying out the door. And 
that was the first time I had an inkling of what the hell I was getting myself into. <laughs> they seem like they're determined. They get you so scared. That famous one is if you shoot that yeah, note, I'm not bring it out. back and we'll give you another one. <laughs> the train was arduous. I wrote to my mother, I said, I don't know how the hell I'm going to survive this thing, but I'm not going to give up. Almost two years we were training, you became very close to your buddies. I mean, you just yeah. made up your mind, you were going to do it. Come down with hot water. And that was part of the beginning of the, the brotherhood. Any combat soldier goes through the same anxiety because everybody knew that some of us were going to come back. We knew something big was going to happen. I think we're about as ready as you can be. It's just kind of like clockwork. You know what your mission is, you know what you're going to do. Everybody was gung ho. And I did the jump. I remember we were coloring up, you know, painting our faces. And Gunny, he was a sergeant in the machine gun platoon. He was kind of a live wire. And he walked up to me and he took me by the hand. And he said, Johnny, he said, kill as many of those bastards as you do before you go. <laughs> Flight leader said, you look a little nervous. This is just when we're getting ready to take off. And he says, what do you want to do, live forever? Closest to the door got out, nobody else. Oh. 
I remember standing in a barracks room back at the main station and hearing someone say, Smith got killed yesterday. I could picture his face and recall his voice. He was an actual person out of my life. Somewhere in the building, someone was playing a piano and the sound of the piano is a part of the story as I remember it. On a Friday night after work, I got a telegram that said he had been slightly wounded. And my thought was, oh good, now he'll be coming home. But just a few days later, my mother called. They had received another telegram that said he had been killed, that he had died. I cried and I cried. Years later, I would dream about him coming home. And he was an old man, but he didn't remember me. He just couldn't place who I was. But I could see him, I could hear him talk. I told my mother, this can't be the good earth that I've always known. This must be hell. Let me take a picture. 